Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village. I'm going to test the brand new TaylorMade M1 irons. I've got the 7, the 5 and the 9 iron to test in this review on GC2 and HNT hitting real Pro V1s. I've been looking forward to testing these because in my personal opinion, out of all the TaylorMade irons they brought out this year, or there's four sets actually, for me these are actually the best looking. So they brought out the P750s, the 770s as well, which are the player's irons, and they've got two sets of irons for the, the help helping set of irons. They've got the M2, which I've already reviewed on my channel. They hit the ball a ridiculous long way, but because of the strong lofts, but then they've zipped the weight down on the head to get a ball airborne. Very much game towards the, the game improvement section. But the M1 iron is a, is a smaller, kind of more subtle version of that. So it is still going to offer distance. That's what they're saying. It's still going to offer ball flight. Again, that's what they're saying, but it's a smaller head shape. And for me, a much better looking head, much better looking than any of the club's irons that they brought out. The reason why I say that, I just think it's been finished a lot nicer. I like the finish that they've put on this golf club. And it's not too overpowering with its kind of jazzy features. It's quite, I don't know, it's just quite nice. It's, it's, I would say it's a sexy golf club. And with that sexy golf club as well, it's got some really nice features when I look down at it. The top line isn't ridiculously thick on this, but the bottom of the golf club is really fat. It's almost like it's got a big bottom, a big derriere, a big gluteus maximus here at the back. However you want to say it in any country that you live in. And that's given a little bit of protection, a little bit of feedback when you come in to hit the shot. But let's, let's actually hit it and see that. The lofts on these aren't ridiculous. They're strong, but they're not stupid strong. We actually have a 30.5 degree seven iron, which in modern days is somewhere near a normal seven iron. Still in my head, it's a six iron, but somewhere near modern day seven iron loft. And when I look down at it, it's again, it reminds me of one of my favorite golf clubs from last year, the RSI 2, which is the smaller version. I love the look of that head. And I really like the face slots. It borders the face and gives you a direction of where to hit. How much effect these face slots have, it's hard to call. And even the, the bottom slot, the speed slot, I'm not sure how much it's going to affect, but it does do very good for confidence building. It gives me an idea of where to hit from. Let's give me a hit and then we'll give you a bit more information about the technology that's in these clubs. So 30.5 degree 7 iron. My prediction is that it's going to carry somewhere in the 170s. It does look nice behind the ball. It's not too massively offset either. And they promised height, and they delivered height and distance. <laughs> I wasn't trying to hit that hard, and that's, that's carried at 170, was that eight? No, sorry, my apology, 183 that carried. But the height in my head of an eight iron, a nine iron, it went to space. You can see all the delivery numbers there. You see that the angle on the, the, the line angle isn't perfect for me here. You can see it's a little bit toe down. But that, there's a new feature in the M1 iron that allows that custom fitting. There's a little cutout here at the back, very similar to like a, a ping iron where they have that cutout, but they filled it with a, a squishy material to allow custom fitting to be a more applicable. So they can actually change the lie of these golf clubs a lot more. There's tungsten weight in the toe. And the reason why they've done that is because they've stripped a lot of weight around the golf club. So they've had to then reburst, reimburse that weight back into the toe in the form of tungsten weighting. They've even stripped weight around the neck and the hosel here and shoved it all towards the bottom of the toe. And that's, that's why I feel like that ball's going up to space. Even though it's a, a low lofted iron, a 30.5 degree seven iron, that honestly went up so high. I mean, so high. Consistent. I think that was 183 again. Off the head, you don't get soft feel. It's not as if it's going to be a buttery soft feel as you would get with the P750s and the 770s. Um, you can see almost identical ball flights there. You can see all the delivery numbers again, path face, strike, strike, club head. You can see all that there. You feel free to freeze the frame and have a look at all that data. I'll be using all that data in reviews going forward as well so you can see it a lot more. Let's go one more with the seven. Three nice shots. Three very nice golf shots. Longer than I uh, maybe expected. I didn't think it was going to carry into the 180s when I'm not really trying to hit that that hard. That was 185 carry. And I promise you, I'm not trying to blast that. I'm finding the middle, I'm getting the ball flight. The height is really super high. That's the first thing that I'm seeing. Um, you can see there that the line angle for me just isn't quite suited. Spin number's low. Spin number is very low on these irons. 5,200, considering I'm hitting Pro V1s on GC2, that's a low spin number. So how much stop you're going to get when the ball lands? You're only going to get the stop, in my opinion, because of the height. 
It's the only way you're going to get that ball to stop because of the height of the shot, not so much of the actual backspin that you're going to produce on it. But so far, as the performance goes, it's right up there with a club that would... It's almost quite a blanket club. It could cater for a lot of different handicap ranges, this. From high handicappers to, I don't know, maybe starting to get into golfers who move into single figures potentially as well. Let's move to 5-iron next. So 5-iron loft is 23 degrees, which again is, is playable. It's not ridiculous. It's not as if it's gone stupid strong into the low 20s. Um, again, I really like the finish of this golf club. I love the chrome, I love the shininess around the bottom, but then the slightly brush finish around the top line and on the face, it's more of a brush finish. You don't get that glare. I just think for, for the, all the clubs, that the irons that TaylorMade have brought out this, this year, and, and they have brought out four sets, like I said before. This one for me looks the smartest. It looks for me that has the best shelf appeal and it just has that really top end finish. I just need to pull the flag further back for this shot. Uh, let me go back to about, it's hard to predict really. I'm going to go... 215. Yeah, I think 215 would be about the five iron distance I'm going to hit with this, with this loft. Now, I mentioned at the start of the review that this club had a bit of a back end, a bit of a, a, a behind on it. <laughs> when I look down at the five, the top line is thin, which I like. I can see the back of that club. I can start to see the butt of that golf club when I actually set it up behind the ball. I don't like that. Personally, I don't like that, but I think for a lot of golfers, that would be quite confidence building to see a little bit of uh, a bit of chunk behind the club head. I think that would be quite confident boosting for a lot of golfers. Let's uh, let's go with the five. Not hit it great. I didn't hit that good at all. That's a little, it's going to be pull up short of that two hundred. Uh, it's done all right. It's done all right. It's uh, that was a chunky shot. How much a club can help you on a chunky shot is. Uh, I'm not sure, it's never going to help you in a million years. So 201 yards carry, and I called that as a bad strike straight away. Uh, you can see strike location there, very high off the face because of the fact that I hit down on that a little bit too much that time. But for a bad shot, 201 yards, 15 yards shorter. Well, I predict 15 yards shorter. Let's see if I, when I hit a good one. So high for a five iron again. It's not how I would see the height of a five iron go. I'd see it come out a little bit flatter than that. It's higher than the window that I would normally see a five iron fly through. Um, I'm probably not going to get 215 maybe out of this. Let me think. This is two clubs longer. Yeah, so 180, 180 for the seven iron. Probably 190-ish for the, for the six iron. So probably about 200 for this. Yeah, maybe I, I called that 215 a little bit off, off the scale there, thinking that I'm three clubs further on than my seven, but I'm only two, so... Yeah, maybe it won't go 215, because that gap in them would be too big. I reckon it'll be about 200 mark. Let's go one more. Oh, a slight pull. A slight pulley one. Toey one as well, that was. It's done all right. It's not done bad. Um, I'm not overwhelmed with the five iron there. For one, because of the look straight away when I look down at it. To me, it's just that little bit too chunky when I see the back of the club. But I do think that would be, for a lot of golfers, very confident building. Uh, you see they're very toey, not a good shot that time, I'm afraid. A bad connection. So let's go lofted now. Let's go into 9-iron. Now, 9-iron loft is 40 degrees. Um, again, getting closer to what 9-iron loft should be. I would normally say 9-iron loft is about 42 degrees. Compared to these and the M2, there's roughly about 2 degrees difference. These are weaker by 2 degrees uh, across the board, pretty much, roughly. Um, where the M2 are much, much stronger, but then they've moved the weight further down to help you hit the ball up in the air. So they can kind of get away with it a little bit. Now what we do with the, I think it's from 8i, 9i pitching wedge, we lose the face slots and we lose the speed slot on the bottom. So now this is much more of a, of a classic looking iron and the fact that it's not got these protected barriers at the bottom and the side. Still got a little cutout behind the, the hosel, like I said before about changing the line angle, and it still looks smart. I really like the look of this golf club. It's got the kind of bit of the M1 carboning of the driver in the back of the head. I think that's more of a detail than anything. I don't believe that's actually carbon, but I might be wrong in that. That just looks like it's decoration, so it fits in with the driver heads as well. Let's go 9 iron from 150. <laughs> that is so much like a pitching wedge flight. It seems to just go up and up. Nice shot, nice result. Felt good. 
Again, it's not butter soft. It's not as soft as you're going to get out of your P750s and your 770s. Um, but it does feel nice in the M2s. The M2 for me feels a bit clicky and a bit a bit um, hard off the face. This has just that slightly softener, softer feel as I hit this. Getting some good consistent numbers so far across the board on the shots. Let's see if that continues with the nine. Yeah, if someone said to me, what club are you hitting? I'd say pitching wedge there. For, for the height, I'd say pitching wedge all day long because it seems to be going up to space. And that's where they can somewhat manipulate the lofts because they can still get that ball flying up in the air with less lofts. Low spin again, though. That's the only thing. That's the only way, way you're going to be able to get that ball stopping on the green, in my personal opinion, is because of the height rather than the spin rate. I feel like the spin for me is not going to get the ball to stop super quick. It's more going to be the fact that it's gone up to space and coming down with snow on it. That's the way it's going to stop on the green. Let's go one more nine. Maybe slightly left the target. But probably about the 150 odd mark again. Yeah, good consistent numbers. Cannot complain about the consistency of those clubs. I'm not getting any hot shots. And I hate clubs that do that. When they're, I probably got it a little bit off the M2 where it almost comes off a little bit hotter than hot. You know, when you get one that just weirdly carries 10, 15 yards further and you don't really want it. See, the eight, seven iron's carrying about 184, the five iron's carrying about 203, and then the nine iron carried about that 150 mark, 153, 154 mark. And that kind of blends in quite nicely. Nine, where would the eight go? Yeah, maybe the eight has, has some ground to cover there with 30 yards. But I suppose if, you, if the eight hit it around 165, 167, you probably get that gap in right. Um, as a set goes, without question, the best looking iron that Taylor made have brought out this year, in my personal opinion. I think they look fantastic. Performance wise, they hit every criteria and the category that they're trying to hit. Like I say, it's much more the M1 meet. For me, it's much more of a blanket set. Loads of different types of golfers could use the M1. The M2, not so much. You wouldn't get a better player particularly using the M2. As where you'd go with the P750s and the 770s, you wouldn't see that in the hands of golfers who can't break, let's say, 100 so, roughly. For me, though, the M1 has all of the bases slightly covered. I mean, whether we'd see any tour players with M1s, I'm not sure. Let me know, if, let me know in the comments below if, the, if you've seen or spotted any tour players with M1s yet. I think a lot of them are using the P770s and 750s. As an overall set, right up there, Remind me very much of my favourite set of last year, the RSI 2s, which I look, was it RSI 2s or RSI 1s? The smaller version anyway, I can't remember the order of the number now. I feel like these, the numbers have changed over. Was the 1s the bigger ones and the 2s were the smaller? Yeah, now it's the other way around. 1s ones are smaller and 2s are bigger. Either way, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, clicked thumbs up. Comment below what do you think of the new TaylorMade M1 irons. Don't forget, if you are new to my YouTube channel or if you've been a, a watcher for a while and just haven't clicked subscribe, why the hell not? It's free to do. Just click the red button down here in the corner and you do not miss a single video that I'll upload daily. Guys, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.